Welcome back to Terra by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, this has a, been a wild news day today. Um, so the Colorado Supreme Court ruled that Donald Trump cannot be on the primary ballot for the 2024 election because he engaged in insurrection against the United States. Therefore, he is disqualified per Amendment 14, Section 3 of the Constitution. And that was a four to three vote. Um, now, in the CNN article that I'm uh, looking at here, um, there's a federal, a former federal appellate court judge and prominent conservative J. Michael Luttig, who, along with Lawrence Tribe, they're constitutional scholars, and they've been reviewing um, this uh, Trump, the insurrection, the 14th Amendment for like the past three years. And from um, Luttig's point of view, he basically said that this uh, appellate court, um, uh, their decision is unassailable. Let me get to... Um, to that and he even challenged the uh, the uh, opinion penned by one of the three dissenters of that uh, of that uh, Supreme Court from Colorado and the quote from um, from Mr. Luttig is I called it unassailable because as you noted the preeminent constitutional scholar of our time Professor Lawrence Tribe and I have been studying this for three years now in the wake of January 6. Professor Tribe has been studying Section 3 of the 14th Amendment literally for his entire career. So when we say that the opinion is unassailable, that means he and I have taken into account every single argument contrary to every point made by the court today in concluding all of the contrary evidence to the opinion tonight, and it's unassailable. He said, the Supreme Court will have to decide what the meaning of an insurrection or rebellion is for the purposes of the 14th Amendment. And that's what the Supreme Court of Colorado did today. And its reasoning and its support for that conclusion is also unassailable. So, wild. Um, I did, uh, and Trump, uh, Trump team, Trump is obviously <clears throat> not thrilled with this. I did look up the Jack Smith insurrection, uh, the Jack, Jack Smith January 6th insurrection trial because I wanted to see if he was charging Trump with insurrection. And sadly, he's not. Um, the four counts were conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction attempt to obstruct an official proceeding, and conspiracy against rights. <clears throat> I don't know if that will meet <clears throat> the legal definition <clears throat> of insurrection. Um, there's an, uh, Glenn Kirshner, along with Brian Tyler Cohen, he was thinking that the uh, the the Supreme Court justices may rule uh, that Trump's not eligible, uh, but he was really split 50-50 on that. There's a, a TikToker called Legal Dad. He's a lawyer down in Arizona. He thought that the Supreme Court uh, would rule on Amendment four, the 14th Amendment, Section 3, and basically say that Trump hasn't had due process and hasn't been uh, convicted of insurrection. So he didn't think that they would boot him off of the um, off of the ballots. But this is a wild development because this means it's going to go to the, the Supreme Court. And if you look at how kind of the breadcrumbs are laid out here, Jack Smith's um, case in early March is going to basically detail everything that Trump did to uh, prevent the peaceful transfer of power which one might call an insurrection. And that case is currently on hold because Trump has an argument saying that presidents have absolute immunity to all crimes when, when they're the president of the United States. And that court case, Jack Smith, uh, it's holding up the January 6th case. So Jack Smith took Trump's claims and petitioned directly to the Supreme Court, as well as the appellate court in the... Uh, the district where Judge Chutkin is, to rule on this uh, uh, in a uh, expeditious fashion. Normally what would happen is Judge Chutkin would rule on it, it would get appealed, it would go to the appellate court, um, whatever decision would be made would be appealed and it would go to the Supreme Court. So using um, things that happened during uh, Watergate, 
Jack Smith went straight to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court seems to understand the importance of the moment and uh, wants to hear the case. And they gave uh, Trump's lawyers until, uh, I believe, December 20th to submit a response to this. Now, Trump and his team are basically saying, this is ridiculous. There's no reason to speed this up. You know, blah, 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 blah. I want you to think about that for a second. If Trump really thought he could win this case of presidential immunity, he should want it racing forward to the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court would agree with him. They would say presidents are kings. They can't be convicted of any crimes. And then Trump would be saving millions of dollars in legal fees. Everything goes away. You know, everything but like the Georgia election interference case and the Mar-a-Lago documents case. But even the Mar-a-Lago documents case, no, because it happened after he was president. But a lot of these court cases go away. You can't convict him of anything. Probably couldn't even convict him in uh, Georgia because he was the president at the time. So he's, you know, Georgia goes, the Georgia Rico case goes away. The January 6th case goes away. And maybe the Mar-a-Lago documents case gets a little bit muddy. Okay, so you got that. So he should want this thing racing forward, but he doesn't because he knows he can't win. And the whole point of this is to delay, delay, delay. What are you delaying? You're delaying the insurrection case, the, the basically the January 6th case. <clears throat> and if the January 6th case goes forward before the Supreme Court rules, I don't know how that impacts, impacts the Supreme Court ruling but I'm sure it's not going to impact it in a positive way for Donald Trump. So, you know, he really needs the Jack Smith case delayed. He was going to want, um, but he's going to want to speed up the decision on uh, the Colorado case because he doesn't want to be removed from the Colorado ballot. Uh, Michigan and Wisconsin have ruled differently than Colorado. So the Supreme Court needs to weigh on something. So long intro but it's kind of getting you up to speed with all the uh everything that's going on <coughs> so energy around the colorado decision entertainment purposes only so spirit what's the energy around this colorado um case that ca basically kicked trump off the colorado ballot obviously it's going to be stayed while trump's uh team appeals to the supreme court but let's look at this now king of cups um, what are we going to cross that with, with this, with the six of cups and the burden card? I think that they made a very mature decision on what happened. Um, you know, it, I was using this card, uh, in an early reading, you know, it's back. To, this is your peaceful transition of power. This is the, the, the old president handing over the reins of power to the new president. And we have done the Six of Cups Act from George Washington through Obama to um, transitioning the power over to Trump. Trump is the first person not to willingly give over power and have a peaceful transition of power. And this has been a huge burden on American society because nobody before dared do this. This is uncharted territories that we're in because one man could not accept the results of a free and fair election. <clears throat> in the past, we have the Four of Cups. This is Trump losing the election. Now, mind you, in 2016, he said if he lost the election, he was going to say there was election interference, but he accidentally won. And for almost a year before the 2020 election, he kept saying that there was going to be voter fraud and um, the Democrats were going to steal the election. And he was going to appeal it. You know, again, he was telegraphing it just like he had done in 2016. So this is Trump getting information, losing court cases and all his plots um, to stay in power were being thwarted. It was news he did not want to hear. So what did he do? He basically refused to leave. He wasn't going to leave leave this. And if he leaves America out in the cold, he leaves America out in the cold. Hmm. 
now looking at this from uh, um, I'll, I'll finish the re this reading as an insurrection reading, and then I'll I'll dovetail it back around again for the um, for this court case. <clears throat> there were all sorts of challenges that Trump was making. The election was stolen, and then he just started grifting, just were fundraising the living bejesus out of his out of his followers. This this whole election fraud scheme made his followers poorer and him wealthier. It was all about the grift. It's always been about the grift. The Six of Swords, he wouldn't go away quietly. Instead of going from uh, tumultuous to calmer, he basically tried to keep things tumultuous. He does not want to go to calmer shores. And now we've got this next election coming up. And he's just trying to stir stuff up. But justice is sitting there for him. Justice is waiting. Justice is waiting. Now with the um, with this court case, you've got the you've got the judges, uh, the Colorado Supreme Court, making that ruling about the the lack of a peaceful transition of power and the burden it put on. Um, the arguments were being made in different states. They um, the Colorado case, the arguments were being made um, by the court about, you know, Trump was, uh, you know, he committed insurrection and you got three people that said, no, he didn't. And you have four people that said, yes, he did. So they had to consider all the evidence. In the end, <clears throat> they kicked Trump off of the ballot. The, the, the plate glass window or the stained glass window here represents big institutions. And these folks are now on the outside. They've been booted out. He is no longer, he and his, his whoever his vice president is, are off the ballot. But he's going to sue. It's going to go to the Supreme Court. Um, money. There's going to be a lot of money thrown at this case. Because this case not only affects Colorado, but it's going to affect other states too. As the Supreme Court has to define, as this article was saying, what is insurrection. Um, by going to the Supreme Court, they're hoping to calm things down. Uh, get out of the turmoil of individual states doing individual things and applying the constitution and justice to this. But this is a huge, huge burden. This is a very much a, um, a moment for the United States and constitutional law. You know, we'll, um, you know, there's six to three conservatives to liberal justices on the Supreme Court. Three of those justices were appointed by Trump. And um, so the ones not appointed by Trump are so conservative that, you know, there's a real concern that they won't actually rule based on the Constitution. It's, it's kind of a frightening thought, but it's also like this, the justice card, it's a double-edged sword. Because any ruling that you give that helps Trump on the short term also helps Biden. If the Supreme Court rules that presidents are kings and can't be held <coughs> criminally liable for actions they take while president, guess what? Biden doesn't have to leave. He can declare the elections null and void. He can arrest his political uh, opponents. And we basically become Putin in Russia. Is that what we want? Okay, um, I want to throw next on uh, Jack Smith's uh, insurrection case, Jack, Jack Smith's January 6th case. Will this, how does this link up with the Supreme Court case? Is there any link at all? How are these things going to be related uh, to each other? I think judges are going to be looking at it um, in the agreements. Is there going to be something? Oh, gosh. Okay, so we've got the devil card here. <clears throat> this to me is a judge and jury, as it were. This is um, about Trump and Trumpism and the, the lack of peace, uh, basically the four counts, the uh, interrupting an official proceeding. Trump and his base are all basically on trial. And underneath it all is Trump. Trump himself. Are these cases linked? It could be that this lever card shows a link between the Jack Smith case and the Supreme Court case. 
again, from uh, uh, Legal Dad on TikTok and um, another viewer pointing out to me that Trump isn't charged with insurrection, the Supreme Court may try and decouple Jack Smith's case from theirs. But I think it's really obvious to American citizens how linked these cases really are. In the past is the Queen of Swords. Um, Judge Chutkin's rulings have been swift and, uh, de and decisive. Um, we saw what we saw on January 6th. And, you know, to the, to the average person, you know, <laughs> there's no doubt who was involved on January 6th. Trump MAGA supporters will apologize for him, but at the same time, you know, they say it's BLM and um, and Antifa that were causing the insurrection. So they agree that there was an insurrection, but they want to blame it on somebody else. For the ones that are refusing to believe there's an insurrection, then it was Trump supporters causing all that problem, but that's okay because they're patriots. So, you know, <laughs> there's just so much confusion on on the QAnon Trump side of things that they're nonsensical. So what do we have left? We have, we saw what we saw. We heard what we heard. Uh, we know what we know. <coughs> Jack Smith's case. Um, there's a lot of value and there's going to be assessments done with it. Uh, the Supreme Court, now again, I don't know when they're going to take up their ruling. They have to move quickly. They probably actually have to rule before Jack Smith's case is done because Trump's name is going to be printed on the primaries and he's not allowed uh, to be in, on Colorado. Again, that order is going to be stayed. So he's back on the ballot, but they need, the Supreme Court needs to make a decision rather quickly and decisively about whether Trump can be on the primary tickets or not. And what... You know, what are the consequences of ruling this way? Because they have to rule for or against the Constitution. And I, and I do believe that this lawyer is correct. This constitutional scholar is correct. They need to define what a uh, insurrectionist or rebellion is. <sighs> the strength card. Mastery. I think there's going to be a link between Jack Smith's case and the Supreme Court case ruling. <coughs> I think it's going to be a bitter pill to swallow, though. And I think it's because the Supreme Court's going to rule before Jack Smith's case is done. And then Trump will be on the ballot. This is kind of what I saw before. I saw before that um, the Supreme Court would eventually rule that Trump uh, committed insurrection or rebellion, but not before the result of the 2024 election. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Trump's going to get away with this one. They're, he's going to still be on the ballot. The Supreme Court is going to basically, you know, they don't want to deny him or steal his ability to be on the ballot. So they're going to find, it's going to be a bitter pill to swallow. They're going to rule in front of, in favor of Trump to allow, they're going to overturn, uh, they will overturn uh, Colorado. Yeah, they're going to kick this one back <coughs> to Colorado and let Trump stay on the ballot. I still see that happening. And I th and part of it is just, I think Jack Smith's case would move the needle, but it's they have to rule before Jack Smith's case is done. Now, here's the question. Once Jack Smith's case is done, can that Supreme Court ruling be challenged? I don't know the answer to that. I'd like to think it could be. And I want you to think about the consequences of that. Because by the time Jack Smith's court case is done and decided, and there will be appeals, of course, but let's say we're looking at the May-June time frame, especially if his, if his case gets delayed. Um, Trump may have already sewn up the GOP primary at that point, right? And at that point, in like June, let's say Trump's now the GOP's candidate for presidency. 
and his name is going to be on all the paperwork submitted to be on the ballot for the general election. What happens if this case goes towards the Supreme Court and then they overturn their ruling? They now found that he is guilty of insurrection and cannot be the president. The Republicans are screwed because their candidate cannot be seated as president of the United States. And what do you do at that point? So what I want to ask next is, so it looks like the Supreme Court with Jack Smith's case is going to rule before Jack Smith's case is done and basically keep Trump on the ballot. Now, um, if we assume that Jack Smith's case is successfully prosecuted and there's no reason to believe that it won't be, and there's every reason to believe that he will successfully prosecute this case, will the Supreme Court be required to change that the Queen of Swords came up, changed their decision. Let's find out. Will they be required to change their decision? New information coming out with, with this. You know, uh, again, Legal Dad was talking about due process. Maybe this is that due process. And judgment is blind. Okay, so new information comes out. This case is now brought before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, are they going to rule on it? Oh, it's a, <laughs> there's that Ten of Wands again. Another burden for them to have to deal with. Hard times to be a Supreme Court justice. Hard, hard times. They're, they would have a hard time saying no because this case comes right down to can we elect an insurrectionist as president of the United States? Again, I guess it depends on their original ruling. If they say that the president didn't swear an oath to the Constitution and he's immune to the 14th Amendment then they don't have to take on this case. I don't think they're going to go so far as that. Judgment. Okay, so Jack Smith, his case is done. Judgment's done. And now we've got this new evidence that the court has to take make a decision. decision. Are they going to listen to it? Are they going to take this case? Two of Swords comes to the Two of Wands. Now they have to... Now the, the, when the Jack Smith case is done and delivered... There will be a petition made to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court decide, has to decide if they, they will take this case. It's a matter of when. When can they get it on the schedule? I imagine it will be expedited. Let's see if we get any fast-moving cards here. Um, they, they will consider this case. This case is basically the legacy. This case impacts the legacy of the United States. From George Washington to present, all the peaceful transfer of power... You know, we've had a civil war in there. We've got multiple generations of people. This is all about the family. The, the, the DNA, the heritage of the United States is at stake. This is going to be a huge year in 2024 as far as this case goes. <sighs> Hangman, looking at things from a different light, a different perspective. Is it a willing sacrifice? Possibly. <coughs> I'm... The heavy sigh was, okay, where is this going to go? Because I think they have to, maybe they have to re-review their initial decision. And their initial decision was to leave Trump on the ballot, that he is still eligible to be run as president. And I think this card's not a good sign for Trump. <clears throat> the outcome is the Eight of Swords. Um... This is an interesting card. Does the Supreme Court, are they bound by their earlier decision? They can certainly overturn it. Or is this card the Republican Party? They've bound themselves to Donald Trump. And if the court rules that Donald Trump is not a viable, can't, can't be president because of insurrection, the Republican Party is screwed. Um, this could also be the Supreme Court justices. They're trapped. They're done. You know, if I think Jack Smith's case can be used as precedent to say he's an insurrectionist, it may be by even their definition that they set up, they're stuck. They're stuck. They have to live with their decisions. <sighs> decisions that they don't like. They're going to they're gonna have to do things they don't like. They're going to have to... There's, <laughs> they don't like their options, but they're going to have to do something that they don't like. I'm throwing clarifiers here. There's going to be all sorts of fighting 
and squabbling over this. I think they overturn it. This is going to be, well, regardless of what they decide, if they don't overturn it, the Democrats hit the streets. If they do overturn it, the Republicans hit the streets. Okay, Spirit, let's get me this one card here. Charity. You've got the scales of justice. I think this is almost a cold comfort card. Expect something like in the June time frame. You've got this coin right here growing. This might be a six to three decision. Can you imagine? Six to three. Now that's conservative judges, so they might say he gets to stay on the ballot, but this could also be an overturning. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of turmoil and a lot of people are not going to be happy with this with this decision, but that can go either way. I'll throw on this one as we get closer. I, I'd love to have an answer for you now, and I really want the answer to be, you no know, Trump's off the ballot, but that would be me totally wishing and projecting my wishes onto this thing. I can't tell from these cards. It's going to be, well... Just like Trump's tweet for January 6th. It'll be wild. It's going to be when the Supreme Court takes this up, if they take up this case, and I think they will, upon a, upon completion of Jack Smith's case, they take this up. It's going to be wild in this country. Again, I, I still see Biden winning, regardless of what happens with Trump. But... You know, this is that opportunity for the, the Supreme Court to rule in favor of the Constitution. They could really destroy this country, really damage this country if they don't rule by the Constitution. And, you know, the damn thing is those six conservative judges, justices, they don't want advocates on the Supreme Court. They want to be, you know, just read off of the, you know, the original Constitution. Well, the Constitution is pretty darn clear in situations like this and maybe they don't like to, they don't care if they're hip, hypocritical or not or the hypocrisy they show but it's going to be really hard to make any arguments otherwise okay <clears throat> regardless of the decision how is joe biden feeling in january 2025 queen of cups Keeping his emotions in, juggling. Truth has been revealed. Nostalgia. I think he's. I, th I think these are pretty good cards here. Election. <laughs> Interesting how this one came up again. Bringing things to an end, and judgment. Charging forward. Um, You know what this is? This is the Supreme Court justices having to make a decision and being very concerned about the powder keg that they're about to unleash. Um, and they're going to weigh the pros and cons of their decisions. They're going to have to make a decision quickly because the remember I was saying I wanted to see cards of movement. Here it is. They have to make a quick, they have to make, uh, they put this on the fast track. They have to contemplate what's good for the country and the constitution versus what emotionally they want to do. The truth has been revealed, Jack Smith trial. They, it's all about the transition of power and um, the, the violent, there was no peaceful transition of power. There was violence that day. This card, and I said, it was interesting. This card came up as one of the ones I flipped over. This is that, uh, that decision they have to make Using the scales of justice, there's your ending. I think they put a candidate's a candidate's run to an end. That's the judgment based on the law, based on the Constitution. This candidate cannot run. I don't think Trump's going to be allowed to uh, to run for president of the United States. I think they're going to make their decision, and how oh, this uh, when they do. It's going to, and I think it'll be happening in the summertime. Um, all hell is going to break loose in the U.S., as you might imagine. Like, you know, this is this is that time where 
they if they take this case they're going to put the barriers up around the supreme court <laughs> they're going to have the national guard ready and if uh, they know they're close to a decision they will probably deploy the national guard around uh <coughs> around the courthouses um and uh, national guards may be on uh, on alert throughout the united states for riots and protests protests are fine riots are not now i was asking how biden was feeling but i didn't get that what i got was what i think was the outcome of that Anything else, Spirit, that you want to share with their decision? Again, the original decision, I thought they would wait till after the election. It looks like they might actually decide before that. Little four Carter. Will, will the uh, Supreme Court's final decision on Donald Trump's candidacy be decided before the election? Yes or no? That's a nightmare. That's typically a no card. nightmare decision because it's going to start new journeys on that but they have to make a decision they are the supreme court they have to do they have to do it you know what's in the best interest of the united states and they have to plan for it will they make their decision before the election I think they, I mean, honestly, I think they want to delay it. They want to delay after the election. It's like, no, we, he wouldn't be able to run, but we'll put it to after the election type thing. <clears throat> it's a nightmare. Anxiety. They have to make a decision. They can't wait. They've got to move. They go forward with their answer, and it's a new journey. I... I still think that they will make their decision beforehand. I do think they will make their decision beforehand. Okay. Now that now I've gotten that out of the way again, the last uh, the last thing I wanted to throw on this one was any other information Spirit can give us regarding this whole situation here. I'm a little bit torn. I mean. What I, really, what I really want is justice. I really want justice. I want the Supreme Court to rule based on the Constitution. I want the courts, uh, Jack Smith's case, I want them to rule based on the Constitution. Not on their emotions, not on their political ideologies. I want them to rule based on the Constitution because at the end of the day, the Constitution is the document, it's the ideal that we swear our oaths to in, in, when you're in a political office. It's what keeps everything, it's the glue that keeps American society together. And if you weaken the Constitution, if you throw out the Constitution, you weaken this country. This is a time for bravery. This is not a time for partisan politics and such. Democracy counts on this. All right, Spirit, what do you have to share with us? Jack Smith, it's a time for, it's, deci it's decision time. And this is Jack Smith. You know, he's here for it. I was gonna do a four carter, but I'm gonna do a six carter. King of Wands, Jack Smith, Department of Justice, Supreme Court. Time for the Kings to make their decisions. It's gonna be an emotional, emotional time the people's passions are going to be really really charged up but you've got to rule to me this is a constitution card you've got to rule based on the rule of law based on the constitution and you've got to drive this thing forward yeah there's going to be a lot of emotions involved with this you can't let that get in the way just as i was saying in the intro you can't let your emotions get in the way of what the constitution says you got to support the constitution this tells me that, um, okay, yeah, it's just echoing what I was saying. Uh, Page of Pentacles, um, again, 
to me, this original uh, this card also represents um, grifting and the in, the uh, insurrection, the stolen election uh, lies. But I think it also represents Jack Smith in his court case of bringing stuff up to the Supreme Court. <clears throat> There's that getting kicked off the ballot. You go um, Smith, Trump getting kicked off the ballot. Queen of Wands, summertime, making the decisions. Decisions need to be made. Actions need to be taken. You've run out of time. Star card. This is for the this is for the good of the country. This is what gives the country hope. I really like that. It's hard. Hard times. Hard times. The U.S. is going to be fine. The, the U.S. Well, it's going to go through a lot of things, but. This is the U.S. card. This is the U.S. surviving. This is democracy surviving. It's going to be difficult. This is not going to be easy because the emotions are so strong. Now, again, propaganda that's been uh, perpetuated. Earth 1, Earth 2, right-wing news. Basically not being truthful and honest. People living in informational echo chambers. QAnon. All this stuff. Russian election interference, China election interference, North Korea election interference, Cuba election interference. There was just a story about all those countries trying to interfere with the U.S. elections. You've got wars in Ukraine with Russia. You've got wars with um, Hamas in Israel. You've got Venezuela looking to basically look like they're going to invade uh, Guyana to get oil over there. There is just, it's a powder keg out there of emotions. We'll get through this. I don't know how, but we will. Okay, that was a wild reading. Thank you for, for going on that journey with me. Um, there's a lot to, to unpack here. And we've got a few months before the first dominoes start falling. Uh, but there's a lot of court cases, starting with um, Trump's presidential immunity case in front of the Supreme Court, and it's going to be followed rapidly by this Colorado case, and then followed by Jack Smith's uh, four felony indictments against Trump for trying to halt an official proceeding, and assuming conviction on there, does that impact the Supreme Court's ruling? especially if they justify their ruling by certain criteria that maybe Jack Smith's case demonstrates by those criteria Trump is not fit to serve. And then the fallout, if that happens. And then does Trump flee? The, if, if Trump is not allowed to, to run for presidency, he better believe he's going to make every attempt to get the heck out of the country. But we will see what happens. Nothing's been decided yet. Anyways, thank you for watching this video and supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all your likes and shares and everything you do to help feed the YouTube algorithm so that my video makes it out to a wider audience. To the new viewers and new subscribers to the channel, welcome. Glad you found us. Hope you found this reading insightful and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.